Throughout their history, the Pittsburgh Steelers have built their roster one way, through the draft. The 70s dynasty was created from within, including the greatest draft class the NFL has ever seen. 1974, taking Swan, Lambert, Starworth, Webster, Shell. That philosophy has carried on through recent years. Ben Roethlisberger, the 11th pick of the 2004 draft, to today with players like Juju Smith-Schuster and TJ Watt. But like any franchise, their track record is far from perfect. They've had their share of misses, prospects who never panned out. That's what this series is about, highlighting the biggest bust in Steelers history. It's not an effort to make fun of those players, but to revisit careers we've tried to forget and remember why they've never succeeded in the NFL. Lima Swede was supposed to be the next big thing. A four-star receiver from Benham, Texas, he stayed local and committed to the Longhorns. He made big play after big play, hoping to lead them to a national title in 2005. That year, he caught the game-winning touchdown to defeat number four ranked Ohio State, a sensational grab in the left corner of the end zone. Extra defensive back, the nickel man, Mitchell, number 32, who has been playing nickel all night. They'll rush three, Carpenter moves up into a gap. Now you back back out, second down and nine. Got a lot of time, throws in zone, cut! Touchdown, Texas! What a great play for the Horns! Vince Young comes up with a 24-yard scoring pass to Lima Swede, the X-Man. Despite a wrist injury limiting Swede to seven games a senior season, he was one of college football's top playmakers. At Texas, he caught 20 touchdowns on just 124 career receptions and averaged over 16 yards per grab his final two years. Heading towards a 2008 draft and after running a 4-4-8 at the Combine, Swede was projected to be one of the first receivers off the board. He wasn't. Instead, he was a ninth receiver taken, behind the likes of Jordy Nelson and Deshaun Jackson. Quickly scooping him up at number 53 overall, Pittsburgh thought they were getting a steal. Draft analysts agreed. Randy Feetner, then the Steelers wide receivers coach, said he couldn't imagine Swede falling that far. Quote, we were very surprised and very ecstatic back in the back of the room. Really excited. I never thought that he would still be at that slot, and obviously we're very excited to have Limus on board. I love his range. The circle of catches is extremely large. The area miss is big. Despite his second-round billing, he was stuck behind Heinz Ward, Santonio Holmes, and an offense that still heavily relied on the run game. Sweet had a relatively quiet preseason, but by no means a bad one. He showed the ability to make tough catches like this reception in Week 3 versus Minnesota. They have a fourth down and five. Their fourth, fourth down opportunity to try to convert. Back is left, which a diving catch at the 43-yard line by Lima Swede to make up Steelers move the sticks. Clock winds to a minute two. He didn't get out of bounds. That set up a Jeff Reed game-winning 47-yard field goal. Next week, he came this close for a spectacular grab in the end zone versus Carolina, one eerily similar to the play he made versus Ohio State. The refs narrowly ruled him out of bounds. Come on, give it to him. He lands out of bounds. Preseason, give it to him. We're challenging. One. 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 The beginning of his rookie season was a quiet one. He didn't play until week seven, and even on his first career NFL reception, his suddenly suspect hands were on display. 65 now playing the right tackle for Cologne, third down and six. Left which guns a pass, and Linus Swede drops the ball. He had just checked in the game, his first offensive snap. Or they call it a catch, let's see. Yep, they call it a catch for Swede who is their second-round draft choice, a rookie out of Texas. Number six all-time in Longhorn receiving. And with Dallas Baker down today with a shoulder sprain, Swede was brought up and makes the catch on the place, playing the fourth receiver in 11-yard grab. Swede's playing time the rest of the regular season was inconsistent, and it felt like every pass thrown his way came on a slant, not the long vertical plays he regularly made on Saturdays. In 11 regular season games, he caught just six passes for 64 yards. But that output felt Hall of Fame worthy compared to what happened in the playoffs. That's when Lima Swede fell apart. With Pittsburgh wrapping up an eventual 35-24 win over the San Diego Chargers, Swede got a shot. Running deep down the right sideline, backup quarterback Byron Leftwich heaved his only pass that game his way. It should have been a touchdown, Swede showing his speed to run away from the secondary. It wasn't. Third and seven at the three-minute mark. And Leftwich, frozen rope. What a pass! Should have been caught. Swede unable to hold on to it, the rookie from Texas. Boy, how many deep throws have we seen today by the Pittsburgh Steelers? Byron Leftwich on that one and Roethlisberger before that have all been on target are just off the fingertips. Was it tipped? I don't think it was. I mean, that was an absolute strike. Yeah, it was a beautiful throw.
Pittsburgh hung on the win, advancing to the AFC title game against arch rival Baltimore. Sweet had another drop, a much more costly one, letting an easy touchdown right through his hands before halftime. Had it been caught, the Steelers would have taken a commanding 20-7 lead. Never seen the punt at all. Here's Roethlisberger. He's got a man wide open and it's dropped for a touchdown. He's right. looking inside. Where's the safety? And that, I think, that's what causes him to drop it. Sweet is still down in the end zone. I know he's uh, suffering from a bruised ego and a little embarrassment after that. But, my goodness, that was a perfectly thrown ball. Sweet's brief redemption, about the only positive play he's known for in the NFL, was swift. 30 seconds later, Sweet supplied a vicious crackback block on Baltimore's Corey Ivey as Heath Miller got Pittsburgh into field goal range. Pittsburgh would go on to win the game, capped by Troy Polamalu's pick six, but coach's confidence in Sweet, and perhaps Sweet's confidence in himself, were gone. Sweet was active for the Steelers' sixth Super Bowl against Arizona, but wasn't targeted and barely played. By the offseason, Pittsburgh was already looking for their next wide receiver. Speedy Mike Wallace was drafted in the third round, and he quickly overtook Sweet snaps. Wallace went on to finish the year fourth in the team in receptions and yards, a dynamic receiver, while Sweet caught just one pass on five targets. The only constant were the drops. In the middle of a difficult season, Sweet left the team for personal reasons in late December. He was placed on the Steelers' reserve illness list, ending his sophomore year. The Steelers again drafted receivers the following offseason. Another third round in Emmanuel Sanders and a diamond in the rough with Antonio Brown. That already put Sweet on the outside looking in. He returned to the team in April, putting out this statement that he was excited to be back. Quote, I am excited to be back on the field and back in the locker room with my teammates. I appreciate all the support I received from the Steelers organization while I dealt with some personal issues at the end of the 2009 season. I have been working diligently, and I am focused on the remainder of the offseason, getting myself prepared to have a great 2010 season. That excitement will be cut short the next month when Sweet tore his Achilles during minicamp. He was promptly placed on injured reserve, ending a season before it began. The next season, he was waived injured during the 2011 training camp to make room for cornerback depth after injuries to Ike Taylor and Bryant McFadden. Sweet's time in Pittsburgh was over. Even including playoffs, he caught just nine passes for 89 yards and no touchdowns. He was out of football for the rest of 2011 and only earned brief looks around the league. Cincinnati worked him out in April of 2012, and he spent three days in Giants rookie camp later that year. But according to reporters, he looked no better than before. Here's what NJ.com had to say at the time. Quote, the veteran wide receiver struggled to make an impact this afternoon and dropped three passes, thus reinforcing a knock on him from his days with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Neither team signed him. He caught a contract with the CFL Saskatchewan Rough Riders, but left the team, later citing his daughter's mother's thyroid cancer as the reason why. Two years later, he briefly returned to the CFL with Ottawa, but never appeared in a game. His football career was officially finished. Sweet wound up in coaching, working with high schoolers back in Texas. He said his NFL career would have been different had it not been for injuries. In March of 2019, Sweet filed a $5 million lawsuit against the NCAA for negligence in their handling of concussions. Sweet said he suffered multiple concussions while playing at Texas. Sweet clearly had talent. Even in those clips of his drops, he had the blend of size and athleticism to get open. His downfall can be attributed to his hands. Why he struggled to catch the ball so much is a mystery. Maybe it was partly technique or partly a lack of confidence as the miscues piled up. Either way, he goes down as one of the biggest busts of the Kevin Colbert era.